Sarah, fantastic to meet you. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us. So for people who don't know anything about the kindergarten teacher, what's this story all about? What can people expect? Sure. Um, you know, it's a story about a woman who has been a kindergarten teacher for 20 years and is sort of creatively starved, but she's a real esthete and she, she loves poetry um, in particular. And one day she, she um, has a, you know, encounters a boy in her classroom who exhibits a prodigious gift with, with poetry. And so she takes it upon herself to kind of nurture his talent um, and ends up crossing a lot of sacred boundaries and, and um, committing some transgressions along the way. But I, I think it's a real sort of fun ride and a bit of a psychological thriller. <laughs> and it's actually based on a 2014 Israeli film. So what kind of sparked your interest in the story from that? And why did you want to make your own version? Yeah, um, well, I saw um, Nadav Lapid's you know, original film and really fell in love with it and um, was offered you know, the, the chance to adapt it. And I was at first a little tentative because I, you know, I love to write and direct my own stuff. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, how do I feel about doing a remake? Um, but I felt in this case that it was a story. It was such a beautiful story that the bones of the story were so good. And I felt I could really kind of like lift it and set it in an American cultural context that would feel new and fresh. And, um, and I was really interested in this kind of challenging and complicated female character um, and excited at the prospect of sort of anchoring the story in her point of view more than it, I think in the Israeli version. Mm -hmm. So that was something I felt I could um, at, make changes to and adjust um, and, and really tell my own unique story. And what strikes me about the film is kind of, it seems very meticulous in the, the colors and the, you know, the cinematography, you get quite close to Maggie Gyllenhaal's character. Mm -hmm. How do you characterize your, your filmmaking style, the way you've, you've made this film? Well, I think, you know, uh, discussing this with my DOP, um, Pepe, who, who's really wonderful, we knew we wanted to kind of lean into the thriller genre um, a bit. Um, but I think we tried to do it in a really sort of humane way that's not sort of stylization first. It's really, everything was really kind of rooted in the psychological, so we weren't putting the, the, heart, the cart in front of the horse, so to speak. Um, and, you know, we, we like utilize like the slow zoom and um, really we're, you know, we're trying to tell a story that's tense, um, but uh, mirrors really the character's obses obsessiveness and, um, and passion, I think. Uh, and with the soundtrack as well, I feel like that kind of yeah. really adds into it, kind yeah. of like maybe like a creeping dread, even when yeah, it's sort of something yeah. that seems quite innocent the kindergarten teacher. Right, right, exactly, you know, and I think, she, you know, she's such the sort of perfect kindergarten teacher in the beginning, um, and as you're kind of on the journey, you know, things, even musically, start to take a sort of dissonant turn, um, and so that that was the sort of intention. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, a fantastic cast, uh, not least Maggie Gyllenhaal, right at the center of it, and perhaps, I think, the best performance of her career, so... Did you have her in mind for this role or, you know, how did you work with her to kind of really nail this character? Yeah, you know, she was the first person that we sent the script to. You know, whenever I write, I, I try not to think about any um, actors because you don't want to disappoint yourself if you go down a path and you can't um, get someone attached. But but we sent the script to her and immediately she she loved it. And, um, and I think, she, you know, she just has this like kind of beautiful kind of relatability and intensity just... Her herself, her, you know, in, in her previous roles, I, I had seen those two things kind of conveyed side by side. And, and I think, um, you know, I think it was kind of perfect for, for this because we needed somebody that um, would be likable and kind of um, hopefully convey a sense of empathy. Um, but I think an, an actor that could really kind of take some risks and wouldn't be afraid of kind of jumping off a cliff a little bit. And I think Maggie's really like that. Um, and I know she's even spoken in the past about kind of, she doesn't like this cliche of the strong female character. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in this one, she's kind of an anti-heroine in some yeah. respects. You know, you, you're not clear on where you are in terms of moral standing. So do you think yeah. that was kind of also something? I think so. Had? I mean, I know that she's really, as am I, attracted to kind of moral ambiguity. And, um, and I think it makes for a really kind of fun viewer experience where you're not sure what side you're on. Um, 
but certainly this character is, you know, I hope challenging and complicated. And I think this character is also allowed to be vulnerable. And that's something that was really important to Maggie. And I think, um, makes, I, you know, she said to me that it makes her work more fulfilling when a character is not just sort of one note and strong, but, but, um, has a little more going on. Um, and even the supporting cast, Gael Garcia, Bernal, you know, it's not a huge role, but when he's on screen, he, you know, really yeah. makes his mark. And then even the, the five-year-old. Yeah, right. like Parker. So, you know, how did you, how did you get them on board and, and how did you work with them? Because they really add to the pieces. Well. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, you know, we, we approached Gael, who we thought would be kind of perfect. And um, he had actually just worked on Neruda and, and is an incredible lover of poetry. So he was really gung-ho about um, playing the part and, and um, I think just was so gracious and, and, and gave the character so much, you know. Um, and he was really interested in his character not being sort of a villain, mm -hmm. um, which was interesting to me, you know, um, and certainly what, what I wanted uh, from the character. So... So yeah, and Parker, you know, is, is great. And um, we had looked at a lot of um, young boys for the part, and he was actually the youngest child that we um, auditioned. And he just had a, a kind of beautiful kind of mix of both playfulness and just, I think, natural charisma um, and just had a, a great dynamic with Maggie. Um, but he had a very fluid way, you know, when we were auditioning of kind of staying on script and then kind of going off script. Um, and he, he was very open in a way that I think a lot of the older children weren't. Um, and so that was something that um, really kind of caught our eye. And just this kind of thing that he has of this ability to kind of spout this poetry, which seems beyond his, his years mm -hmm. and intellectual ability. It's almost like kind of like a magic realism yeah. or something. Or, you know, you could even in some films imagine it was some kind of, uh, you know, Speaking in tongues, I don't know. Yeah, so sure. Do you, how do you see that, or is that just kind of left ambiguous for you? Well, I think a, a little element of that is from the original, and I think I was, I just loved that. Is you know, is it magic? Is it her? You know, is the whole movie from her point of view and skewed? Mm -hmm. In fact, like, is it just something from her brain? I think that that's what's kind of fun about it is that it's left um, to be a bit of a mystery, um, and I think there's. So much in our world right now is so literal and so black and white. And I think um, there was something fun about telling a story that could, like this sort of suspended, reality is a little suspended, where you don't know um, if it's all a projection for, you know, of Lisa's or not. And there seems to be quite a few themes that do come out of the film. Not least just being kind of like this psychological almost thriller, but also, you know, it's a woman of a certain age, mm -hmm. uh, Kind of sexless marriage or mm -hmm. you know she's chosen a certain career path perhaps feels a bit unfulfilled um talking about creativity you know her kids mm -hmm. seem disinterested the daughter would rather be on instagram than do photography so right. what do you think some of those other themes might be and and what people take yeah, i mean i think there are a lot of themes that i was trying to tackle i think you know firstly i think the subjectivity of art that she's sort of bulldozed in, in the classroom and um she creates poetry that for some reason isn't um, lauded, um, but it's actually not bad poetry, you know, in a, in a certain sense. So th there's that, you know, and, and I think it's, it's very much a portrait of a woman that's kind of starving creatively um, and that wants so desperately to get her voice out, um, but can't and has to do it through a child. So I think there's that. Um, but I think, you know, there's, there's also, yeah, I mean, I, I think the larger issue of like this do we have space in our culture for, for poetry? Um, do we have the attention spans right now for poetry and the sort of, in a way, Zen mindset that's needed for it? You know, where, you know, as you see with the children and in in her children in the film, you know, where kind of have a conversation, I look at my phone, a, a million things are going on and we're very much in an age of information and, and kind of we have a constant bombardment of data kind of going through us at any given time. And so I was really interested in, in exploring how poetry can fit into that. I mean, it, it probably can. Um, and so here's a woman that's really fighting for kind of a, a pure moment in which we could kind of create and, um, and allow space um, for meditation even. Uh, and even on her actions of kind of 
going too far, being yeah. overzealous and you know, trying to nurture this talent. Yeah. I, it's not always clear if, if we are supposed to be judging her harshly yeah. or not. So is that also something you wanted to just kind of just leave for people to kind yeah, of... Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was really interested in this kind of morally amb- ambiguous journey of... And, and even in, in the fact that you could vacillate as a, as a spectator between totally understanding her and being like, oh, good point, Lisa, this is, you're, you're right. And then being like, oh, you're doing way too much here and, and I'm feeling really uncomfortable with where you're going. Uh, you know, I thought that made it kind of fun and nonlinear in a way. Um, and how does it feel to have the film here at London Film Festival? I mean, also in the respect of, the, I think, 38% female-led films and female film directors. So is that also part of this important view? Yeah, you know, it's been great. You know, I've been seeing a lot of in, kind of incredible films by, by, by women, and um, it's been nice to kind of see those numbers uh, go up in terms of, um, you know, how, how fi- film festivals are are kind of creating their lineup um, and programming films. So that's been great. And, you know, of course, I'm elated to be here in, in London and part of part of this year's festival. And having more diverse stories, I think, yeah. up on the screen and female-led stories yeah. that aren't just so clear-cut. Right. Um, and I think particularly, you know, it's been exciting to see women take on the thriller and horror genres a little more. Um, you know, this one's obviously like more of a psychological thriller and... and in an interesting genre space where it kind of feels kind of almost like a documentary at moments, um, or very kind of uh, like realism. But um, but I think it's really been exciting to see the the new directions that um, female filmmakers have been taking. And okay, fantastic. Well, thanks so much. Yeah, Congratulations thank you. On a wonderful film. Yeah, thanks. Thank so you. Much.